Hello friends, welcome all. Hope my videos are helping you out to increase your learning in HVAC and other areas. The playlist I have mentioned. In this particular video, we are going to understand the principal applications and the best practices applicable for any hydraulic piping system for comfort air conditioning system. So let's begin. So in any typical uh, uh, air conditioning plant, a four pipe system wherein a hot water generator is going to be there, a chiller is going to be there to suffice the heating and the cooling requirement of any season at the application level. So there are the air handling units. These are three air handling units which are plugged with the chill water as well as the hot water piping actually. Uh, there is going to be a cooling tower which will be uh, rejecting the heat as it is a water cool chiller. And there is a cascade which is going to take care of uh, uh, the hot water side. So uh, let's let's begin on in terms of understanding the applications, what all uh, applications are going to be for hydronic and how all these things need to be dealt in my hydronic series, which I had started. So with reference to the application, the chill water or the hot water application, the dual temperature applications may require in, in few of the areas uh, where the temperature requirements are different or if it is a winter season then I need to have the hot water circulation in the coil or a dedicated coil for the hot water uh, system uh, and the chill water is going to be required during the summer applications. The condenser water applications, the condenser which is to reject the heat which is there in the chiller itself through the cooling tower. So how condenser water system need to be designed and uh, uh, configured. Talking about uh, the applications, again, the piping is going to be for air washer, which is a kind of evaporative system. It may be a direct or direct indirect evaporative system. So what kind of uh, 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 piping should be there? Similarly, for process applications, wherein uh, water is going to be through various rigs or the jacket of uh, uh, the cooling through a vessel and all. So this is how the applications decide actually how a hydronic system need to be configured and selected for any applications. In this video or even the hydronic series, we are not going to calculate the size and other things, which I will be taking a separate video. But based on the applications, what all configurations somebody can really use while designing any hydronic system. So let's understand what is once through system, once through system wherein the water is coming from a river and taking the heat from the condenser and going back to the uh, reservoir so the same water which is uh, which is there not going to come back that kind of system is called a once through system wherein any open pond is being utilized to reject the heat of uh, uh, the condenser of a chiller the second is circulating system circulating system wherein the cooling tower comes into the picture so water goes from cooling tower to the condenser and reject the heat with the help of a fan and the same water being recirculated into the system with number of time based on the water quality and uh, uh, the water uh, requirement. So water quality plays a very important role in deciding number of times of uh, the water to be circulated into the system. So which we will discuss once we will be more talking about the cooling tower and other applications. Talking about uh, uh, how air washer and other things are going to be. So there is going to be a sump when the water is being collected and there is a pad uh, which is called evaporative or the cell deck pad. Water is being pumped over the pad and with the help of a fan, air is being, uh, 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 the temperature of the air is being reduced and it, it's being pumped to the application or near to the application area. So this is again uh, uh, a kind of open uh, loop system. Talking about the closed loop system, wherein specifically talking about the chill water line. So there is a chiller, uh, there's a pump. So pump is uh, pumping water to the chiller. Uh, the high temperature water is cooled down to a temperature of 44 degree Fahrenheit, which is 7 degree centigrade. The 7 degree centigrade water is being pumped to the terminal unit or the air handling unit. And the same water is going to come back. So the same water is being recirculated in a closed loop. That's why it is called a closed loop recirculating system. So water is recirculated through the closed loop. That's why it is called the 
recirculating closed loop system. So we have, we have seen there are two kind of system. One is open. Second is the closed. Open. There are two references which we have discussed. Uh, one refers to the cooling tower and the air washes. When the water is not being circulated into the closed loop, there is a break in the loop, and the closed loop wherein it is actually applicable for the chill water application. In the open loop system, open loop system, as the water comes into the end, uh, directly contact with the air. It need to be treated uh, uh, for the dust and the impurities. Otherwise, it is going to impact the uh, uh, performance of a chiller because of scaling or uh, uh, microbial growth issues. So we will understand all those things also into uh, in detail with the coming slides. So in contrast to the hydraulic uh, uh, hydraulic open system, in case of a closed system, the flow cannot be motivated with the with by the static head difference because it is because of the frictional losses which are going to be and pump need to overcome the frictional losses pump do not provide static lift because water is the the entire piping is completely uh, filled with the water uh, so the the pump doesn't provide the static lift so normally when pump is off uh, in the open loop system Piping above the cooling tower sump is, is going to be remain empty. If I'm talking about the open loop system kind of cooling tower and all. So if I'm same comparing with the uh, closed circuit uh, recirculating system, the water is going to be entirely filled. Even the pump is off. So there is no unbalanced static head which is going to be uh, uh, in the recirculating closed loop system. So whenever somebody is calculating the head of uh, the pump, it has to be the frictional losses to be overcome uh, in the piping, in the heat exchangers, and even in the AHU coil. And that need to be uh, uh, ensured. Uh, so the pressure at the highest point is going to be the system pressure and the static head of the liquid, which is uh, of the expansion tank uh, water level. So this is going to be the pressure which somebody can really monitor and check it over here. So in closed loop system, I need to ensure that static need not to be the part of uh, uh, the pump head, where in the open loop system, the static as well as the frictional losses need to be accounted while calculating the head of the pump. So what we do uh, uh, understand from the direct return, so there is a there's a pump, uh, there's a evaporator of a chill chiller and there are three fcu or the ahu coil units so what pump is doing actually the pump is pumping water to all these three fcu unit so if there is a great possibility if water is not really controlled water can come directly also so if you will see the distance between this particular piping is about 40 feet so there is a great possibility that water will come from the maximum water will come from the first FCO or the HU coil, then the last one. So it, it happens. So you can see the parallel path. The first is A, B, G, and H, which is having 100, 100 feet of the length, 40, and then 40, and 10, and 10 becoming 100 feet. The second FCO or the HU is having a path of 120, and third is having 140. So here it is more resistance. So water is going to be less. In this particular HU or FCU, then it's going to be more in this, and this nearest HU or FCU is going to experience more water. So to avoid this, initially or the conventionally people used to have the uh, reverse return because direct return is having demerits, resistance is unbalanced. Because of the unbalance, water is going to be uh, different in the different uh, uh, HU or the FCU coils and balancing is becoming uh, too difficult in such uh, cases and the regulating wall or the control wall is going to be uh, 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 difficult. So uh, reverse return was becoming more uh, uh, popular in such such areas during those times. But for small uh, pressure differential applications, still direct return can be considered. So the reverse return, which I was talking about, again, there's a pump and the evaporator. 
there are three HU and the FCU coils. Pump is pumping water to the first one and the second and the third. Now you can see over here the water which was going directly come directly to the return of the pump is taken to the level one, level two, and then combined water is coming to the pump. This is called reverse return. This this water is taken reversely to connect back to the return. It is this strategy was actually considered to balance the water. So here you can see, even if it is the first one, even the second one, and the third one, the path is going to be equal. So that's how it is going to be uh, a balance. Now, if you will compare in the previous case, the shortest distance was about 100 feet, wherein with reverse return, it has increased and gone up to 150 feet. My palms are going to be a, a bit higher in the size and which is going to consume more there's going to be a capital investment for the piping and all so now instead of reverse return if we do have automatic balancing wall along with the the uh, pressure independent control wall so the the latest advancement actually helps to overcome the challenges of the reverse return which was conventionally really a feasible or a case people were used to with. So it was self-balancing and demerits were, which I was talking about the expensive because of the pipe and the, the size of the pump actually. Uh, talking about uh, uh, the four pipe system, a separate piping or the coil circuit is to be provided for both cooling and the heating uh, based on the different applications but it becomes too expensive so what best it can be done today with the help of control walls we will also try to understand so the control walls there are two category of control walls three way and the two way in three way based on the location and the application it can be used as a mixing or the diverting three way motorized wall and two way today be, being uh, uh, the advancement in this particular category the pressure independent uh, uh, balancing control wall can be a better option for any hydronic control uh, application. So I will make a separate video in understanding two-way motorized control wall and where and how it really controls and ensures the energy efficiency comes to the design of any HVAC application. So the three-way motorized uh, mixing wall, which I was talking about, if there is a coil, hot water or the chill water is coming, what I can do in the return, I can provide the three way. So if, if temperature is, is achieved or not going to be required, water is not going to be required, this water is going to be mixed into the return. So here it's going to be closed. Water will directly go from here. If it is going to be required, then water will directly go from here and mix with the return. So this particular path is going to be closed. This is mostly uh, put it into the return of the cooling coil or the heating coil. Similarly, di diverting wall, if I'm considering, diverting wall is actually placed in the inlet of the coil, wherein the water is being diverted directly to the return of the return of the uh, uh, chill water or the hot water riser or the header. If temperature is not going to be required, if temperature or the demand is there, water is going to be directly pumped to the coil and then carrying the heat or adding the heat it is going to mix with the chill water or the hot water output talking about uh, uh, the two-way control wall two-way control wall i had mentioned i will make a separate video what is two-way control wall and how it controls uh, uh, and provide the energy efficient solutions in today's design uh, of chill water system in the two-pipe system i had already mentioned two-pipe which is taking care of the heating or cooling actually so simultaneous heating and cooling is not possible but in the four pipe system the heating and cooling two set of different piping are going to be there and uh, uh, two set of different coils are going to be there so this is a better understanding for uh, you all this is a typical two pipe system wherein i do have chiller i do have hot water generator based on the application my pump is going to pump the water in the chiller or the hot water 
to cater the need and the demand at the HU or the FCU coil. So let's say taking an example during the summer, this, this chiller is going to be into the picture and these control valves are going to be, two-way control valves are going to be closed. Pump is going to pump the water at 7 degree or the 44 degree Fahrenheit and it will take the heat from the fan coil unit or the air handling unit and it will come back. It is going to work. During the winter conditions or the heating requirement, the cooler or the chiller is going to be shut and pump is going to pump the water and it will uh, add the heat into the hot water and this hot water is going to be circulated to the same coil to ensure that whatever desired conditions are expected is going to be maintained. Talking about the four pump system, four pipe system, wherein the cooling and hot water parallel going to be pumped with two different set of pumps. Either of the requirement, I may require heating, I may require cooling, or if there is a simultaneous requirement of heating or cooling, this four pipe system is becoming a config configurable solutions. So hope today's video is going to help you out in understanding the different kind of applications, principle, and uh, uh, use of hydraulic piping in HVAC or hot water applications. So thank you. Hope you have subscribed my video. Thank you for joining. If you do have any comment, any query, you can put it into the chat box. I will get back to you with all those queries. Thank you. See you into our next video.